Hello and welcome back to this Cathy Rain LP where we are sort of stuck. Um, not entirely sure what we should do. Uh, let's head over here again and see if Nathan shows up. Doesn't seem like it, unfortunately. Clinic, clinic again. I can't read it from here. Again? No thanks. I'm gonna have to think outside the box. I mean, outside the box. Clearly, we need her to be uh, otherwise occupied. Try to hey, do Oh, hi. I had a few fire away. Uh, huh? I don't need to ask him about them. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. So, tell me about this acting career of yours. What about it? Tell me about the silence of Lambert. Lawrence Lambert, a real estate agent, suddenly turns mute overnight. For weeks, he tries to communicate with customers using a self-invented sign language, only to realize that true love needs no communication at all. He marries his housekeeper, who only knows two words in English, yes and clean. In the end, Lawrence dies of a heart attack in the arms of his lovely wife, Consuelo Lambert Vasquez. Based on a true story. Hmm... <laughs> I'm not sure I want to know what Jacob's Bladder is about, but I'm going to ask anyway. Jacob's Bladder. The tragic story of Jacob Cobb, a schizophrenic man who forms an imaginary romantic relationship with his bladder. During long and joyful monologues on the can, he starts referring to his nether regions by the name of Jenny. Sadly, before Jacob has a chance to elope with his sweetheart, he gets committed to an asylum due to increasingly erratic behavior. After a big fight with his paramour, Jacob refuses to pee for a week, and he dies from a ruptured bladder. Only in Hollywood is what I'm going to say to that. Natural bald killers? It's a dystopian vision of the future where people are valued by the quality of their hair. The protagonist, Eddie Zephyr, turns bald in high school. One day, he has simply had enough of all the teasing and the bullying, and he completely snaps and heads out on a scalping spree in search of the perfect head of hair. Eddie makes his way to Mexico for an illegal hair transplant. However, he has an adverse reaction to the anesthesia, and he dies on the operating table. Okay. <laughs> Why do you always die at the end of your movies? Typecasting. Uh. Give me the rundown on the usual surprises. A lighthearted comedy taking place during a surprise birthday party of a 34-year-old Sid McBacon. The story is told from eight different perspectives to keep the audience guessing who the protagonist actually is. The movie ends with the biggest surprise of them all. Sid suddenly dies of an epileptic seizure. I guess it's more of a dark comedy. You can say that again. Give me the right. Light the story. The movie. Okay. I guess it's more. Oh, never. Not the code. Ah, here we go. So, how good an actor are you? The best. The very best. You know, that nurse in there. She said she loved you in all those movies, and that she always wished you'd give her a live performance. I knew it. She always gave me these strange looks. <laughs> I thought it was contempt, but her face must just be crapping up from shyness. Yeah, that's definitely it. She'd love to see you act, I'm sure. I'm gonna have to oblige. Which movie do you think she'd like the best? Uh, out of all of these, I think this would be the most useful one. How about the usual surprises? Business as usual. Uh, 
Let's head inside. I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know why? Uh, what's that smell? Bacon? Oh, Bobby, my head hurts. I'm seizing. Thank you, thank you. You've been a great audience. Okay, I took too long. Uh, that wasn't really an electrifying performance. I'll have to intervene somehow. <laughs> uh, what a nice clue. I feel sorry hey, for this doofus. guy, though. Oh, hi! Hey. Sure! Hey. How about business? I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know why? Uh, what's that smell? Bacon? Oh, Bobby, my head, hurt, head hurts. Ah! Nurse, he's seizing. Oh, shit. God. Man, I feel like a total jackass. I'll have to make it up to the poor guy later. Uh, yeah. Uh, but let's. Try this. I think that's the Phoenix one. It was okay. And let's get that uh, seaman. Oh. There's that one. And the pen there. Uh, see. This and auto guard. Patient has undergone successful invasive heart surgery and was transferred to this facility as a request. The initial prognosis looks good. The patient is likely to have full recovery in 6 to 8 weeks. Stable 6B. Okay. Uh, can we find anything about this? Joseph Irving Rain. He was brought in by law enforcement in a state of confusion or about exterior tra trauma, pupil dilation. Normal, unresponsive to other stimuli, possible stroke, referring to a neurologist for further diagnosis. Okay. Um. Can't remember anyone else. Let's try that as well. Okay. 
Well, at least we found that. Employee of the month, Carlita Mendez. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> it's that obnoxious nurse. <sighs> Rose and Cop. Indeed. Um, but yeah, let's see. 6B for uh, Wade. Let's try heading upstairs. See if we can talk to him at all. It's all right, Claude. Understood, sir. So, you managed to find me. I did. Well, let's get this over with then. How do you want your pictures? Shall I get some tubes to fill my face with? Will that suffice for your front page? I'm no journalist. Well, not yet anyway. <laughs> ah, she's but a cub. So, you're hoping for your big break. Surely this must be worth an internship at one of the big papers. Do you want me to call Thompson at the Times and get it over with? I still play golf with him every once in a while. That's not what this is about. It's personal. Sounds serious. Perhaps I should ask Claude to produce his gun. You know, Charles, the person most likely to be harmed by a gun tends to be its owner. Very true. That's something the Japs who captured me learned the hard way. Did my grandfather bail you out then too, or was that one of the few times where he didn't save your sorry ass? <laughs> Hold on there. Explain yourself. You're willing to listen to something other than your own voice? I'm stunned. <laughs> <sighs> I'm Kathy Rain. Joseph was my grandfather. Now I remember. You were at the funeral. I was. You were late. I needed my morning smoke. Besides, it's not like Grandpa was going anywhere. <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> oh, just look at her, Claude. She's absolutely fearless. That's Joseph's blood running through her veins. She certainly has a smart mouth, sir. I must say, you have me intrigued, Kathy. What can this old man help you with? Well, let's, uh, let's start from the top. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? I wish I did, Kathy. You must know I did everything in my power to help. How do you think Mary Elizabeth could afford all that expensive treatment? MRIs, neurologists, say what you will about Joseph. But he was never rich. Strange. Grandma never mentioned that to me. She's just too proud. At first she refused. She was convinced that I had an agenda, that there were strings attached. And were there? Don't be silly. Despite all that had happened, I still loved Joseph dearly. I wanted to help. People from places like this have a deeply rooted mistrust in the rich, passed on for generations. In her eyes, I had become one of them. So that's all you know about the whole affair? Are you implying that there's more to know? <laughs> I left the diagnosis to the professionals. Mrs. Rain accepted the healthcare, but asked me to stay out of everything else. So I did. I see. What can you tell me about your friendship with Grandpa? Joseph was the best friend I ever had. We grew up together. Married our high school sweethearts together. Went to war together. I can't even begin to count the number of times he's saved my life. I repaid the favor once or twice. But he came up ahead, no doubt. <laughs> so, when did you two lose touch? I heard that something happened between you and him. What was it? <sighs> the truth is, Brian Rain happened. Sharon Evans happened. My parents? Yes. They ruined everything with their vile, destructive behavior. I couldn't have that around my daughter or my newborn grandson. Joseph was naive. He believed that anyone could be helped, that anyone could be reasoned with, given a chance. He was just... too good, bless him. 
He should have been harder on Brian. More strict. <laughs> I wouldn't mind teaching my old man some manners myself, wherever he is. Yes, of course. You must understand this better than anyone. People like your father simply cannot grasp how far their bad influence spreads. So our family started drifting apart. Eventually, my company grew much too large for this little town, and we moved on. Not long after that, your grandfather ended up in that wheelchair. That marked the end of our friendship, for obvious reasons. Fair enough. Uh... Do you recognize the call sign, Cocky? Would be strange if I didn't, since I was the one who coined it. It belongs to a fellow named Jimmy Cochran. He was a coward, really. The nickname is somewhat of a bad joke. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Tell me about Jimmy Cochran. Is he still alive? In a literal sense. He's been held in a mental institution for years. Let me guess. Since 81? Either 82 or 83. I'm fairly certain it was early 83. Do you remember the name of the institution? Something starting with an E. Uh, Emerson, Everton, or similar. Ingstrom? Ingstrom Psychiatric Hospital? Yes, that's the one. You know the place, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, let's... Uh... I do. My mother is in there. Sharon Evans? I had her committed about a year ago. I see. It must have taken a lot of courage to do that, Kathy. Mothers have a lot of power over us. More than most of us care to admit. I guess so. Do you know why Jimmy ended up in there? Some obsessive compulsive syndrome. He became fixated with circles and started hurting himself, trying to scratch the circles out of his head. Creepy. I wonder what set him off. I think I'll check the place out tomorrow. Too late to head back to the city now. Wow. You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. Martha, my wife at the time, was enamored with the paintings. I believe she first saw them at the high school which the Myers girl attended. Anyway, after the poor girl killed herself, I bought the painting speculatively. When a young artist with any talent to speak of commits suicide, it can be a wet dream of certain connoisseurs. Shortly after procuring the art, I had it valued by an expert who determined that the value was three times the amount I bought it for. Today, I'm sure I would have made my money back tenfold or more if it wasn't for the art theft. What art theft? There was a burglary at the mansion I used to own here in town. It was all over the local news at the time. Well, shit. Eloquently put. Can you tell me about the art theft? Well, somebody broke in, stole the paintings, and got out. Fairly clumsy job. Lots of broken windows. The strangest thing was, was that I had a Monet, a Rembrandt, and two paintings by Picasso, untouched. But every single painting by an unknown local artist, gone. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Somebody wanted those paintings badly. I assume there was an investigation. Yes, Sheriff Truman came by with his deputy a few hours later, but they didn't have much luck. They found a few hairs, which turned out to be from Raffles, the family dog. Some stunning police work right there. Indeed. There was a single witness, though, who said he could make out multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime, but nothing more than that. So, I take it the case was closed? Yes. I honestly didn't care much one way or the other, given the fact that my most expensive pieces were safe and sound. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff about the matter, if that's okay with you. Certainly. I'll call ahead and instruct him to give you everything you need. That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Anytime. But I'm curious. What's your interest in the paintings? 
I've learned that my grandfather went to Sue and asked to see them, right before he had his injury. Is that so? Strange. Quite so. What can you tell me about the Church of the Holy Trinity? They seem like any other church to me. But then again, I'm not their usual clientele. Weddings, baptisms, and funerals are just about what I can muster. And I always leave early. I don't need to ask him about that. Do you recognize this, Charles? Of course. Your grandfather, me, Jimmy Cochran, taken shortly before we went to the war. You guys look like you just won the lottery or something. <laughs> Indeed. We were mere children, with no concept of what we were getting into. Do you know what this key opens? You must be truly desperate if you ask random people a question like that. Well, I technically am indeed. Do you know what this is? A flower. Why don't you consult a botanist instead of bothering me with this nonsense? Fair enough. What do you see in this picture, Charles? Fireflies would be my best guess. They can grow terribly large around these parts. Okay. Not quite what I thought it, they, they are, but... Uh... I don't need to show. Huh. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I think I'm out of stuff to move. Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. Thank you very much. I'd rather not. Hmm. Looks like Wade brought some of his old tombs with him. Just some boring landscape paintings. Just some boring. A private phone. Wade must get special. Okay. Um, well, with that, we made progress. Um, so, yeah. Um, actually, before we cap off, let's see if we can use the... Uh, Use the computer down here. Uh, we can. And let's look for uh, Mr. Cochrane on that one. See if we can find out why he was uh, institutionalized. institutionalized from here then employee of the month okay well with that thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune into the next one see ya